Hey guys, and do you know what really makes me happy? When I manage to score something that's an exclusive to a store that we don't even have in my country. Case in point, this is the MicroMaster Siege 10 pack. And I managed to score one and I'm quite happy about it. Are they all perfect? What do they all homage? Well, we're about to find out in the latest Got by True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe while you're at it. That's right, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sort goes up on the channel, not the least of which is episode two of season two of Universal Collision premiering this Friday. We are off and running with season two of that stop motion series. If you haven't seen season one, or the epilogue for season one, or the prologue for season two, or the couple of bonus episodes, or the season two premiere that happened a little while ago, then by all means, go back, check it out, it's all on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L, The Autobot Family, and this is the MicroMaster 10-Pack. It is an interesting mix. A lot of people said and assumed that this was giving us updates of the characters from the uh, G1 MicroMaster, I guess, era that came with, uh, like, MicroMaster bases and whatnot. And that's only partially true. Some of these homages are a little bit strange, and there's even one character who is brand spanking new. Anyway, let's head over to the table, because we don't have the time to waste when we have ten figures to look at, and take a look at all these guys. And we're going to jump into some MicroMaster mayhem by looking at the Siege 10-pack of MicroMasters, comprising Autobots and Decepticons, some new faces, some old faces, some never-before-seen faces, and as we go through here, I even have a slight bonus to kind of throw in, because otherwise I, really, I don't really know how I'll, I'll, I'll get to review it. You'll see what I mean as we go, but nevertheless, let's get all of these little lads and the, those instructions out of here so that we can take a look at that packaging first. And admittedly, the packaging is nothing to get overly excited about from the get-go because it's not much to see on the front. Although it does look kind of cool when you have all of the figures inside. Of course, there's 10 Siege. Over here we have uh, the names of the three Autobot duos, we'll get to those in a little bit. On the other side, we have the name of the two Decepticon duos. Of course, this time around, we have six Autobots, four Decepticons. The Autobots always outnumber the Decepticons. If you're wondering who's who, we come to the back, and you can see the names of everybody here, all of the team members, and it's an interesting mishmash. I heard the argument made that, hey, what they were doing here is putting out a lot of the figures that came with the like G1 bases. And here on the channel recently, we've looked at a lot of those G1 bases. That's only partially true. In some cases, yes, they did that. In other cases, not so much. We even have two new molds here uh, that, at least as of this recording, and as far as I know, have not yet been released. So it's the first time that I'm getting to handle them in this set. We're going to begin, though, with what I consider to be uh, perhaps the two strongest molds. And that's going to be the jet molds first. There's actually four figures in here that use the Stormcloud and Visper molds that I think a lot of people are already familiar with because they came out in Wave 1 of the Siege line. And we're going to begin things by kind of making me look like a bit of a liar. Because we're starting out with Ground Shaker and Over Air. Both of these are Autobots, and both of these guys do in fact come with, like, MicroMaster base-ish things. Uh, we'll start things out with Ground Shaker first. And on your left, you will see G1 Ground Shaker that came with the ATB base. We haven't looked at that on the channel yet. Stay tuned. We will be looking at that. And on your right, you have the updated Siege Ground Shaker. Both of these are based on the Whisper or Visper molds for their respective time eras. So how do we do the conversion here? Well, it's pretty simple. We take the nose cone section, 
we bring it up on the back, we flip back the wings and we stand the guy up and as we stand the guy up we bring forward the little toes, bring forward the arms and that's what we get. There he is with his G1 version, not a perfectly accurate update but pretty good nonetheless. The articulation is probably what you would expect. We have um, like a head, I guess, that can go like kind of back and down. Though that's really for transformation later on for that combined battle axe mode thing. The arms can go all the way around and ball joints out to the side. Uh, the legs, they can go forward about only that far back there, way out to the side. I feel like the legs on Visper went out better. I don't know if the paint is hurting it here, but if I try to push it out more, it pops off of the ball peg. We do have knees. This knee... This leg's knee is really tight. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's something up there with that ball joint. It's not as good as the earlier use. Again, that one can go forward, back a little bit. We could bend the knee. Straightening it out on this side is rough. The knee on this side bends better. Um, there's some mold degradation here. I'm not going to pretend that there isn't. And next up we have over air or airwave if you will because in North America this guy was released as airwave with the um, ear port. In Japan he was renamed over air for whatever reason but it's the same guy and he was still an Autobot in both cases. Um, Little bit of a different take here, but I can kind of get behind it because I love this mold. In this case, we already looked at the G1 version in episode 557. Too bad that the new version doesn't come with the famous base, but we get what we get. What about the conversion for this guy? Well, again, we lift the wings up. We take this nose section and lift it up and bring it in over. Then we come here underneath and we bring down these legs after I'm pegging them. They'll probably unpeg on their own. We swing them down, push them back and swing them down. Then we take the arms and bring them all the way out and over. And finally, we straighten the arms out because this time we have elbows. I wish all of these little micromasters had elbows, but alas, they do not. We have full out to the side for both arms. We have 90 degrees at the elbow for both arms. We have legs that go well forward, go pretty well back, all things considered. Full splits, really? Well, no, maybe not full splits. Maybe I'm being a bit too kind. Splits out to there. You could probably fake a bit more if you really try. And we have um, knee to 90 degrees. So I, I dig it. And in terms of him being like an accurate, stand him up. In terms of him being like an accurate rendition of the original toy, he does a pretty bang up job actually. I do wish though that like I dig the yellow on his Tommy, but I wish his face was purple, not blue. And I don't know, maybe in Japan it was painted blue. It's, it's a pretty accurate update. I like the extra splashes of yellow and black. Overall, in our first duo here, they're pretty good. The only thing that's slightly disappointing is I feel like the paint that's been applied to the thighs of Ground Shaker doesn't really help them. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. I don't know, uh, and maybe I'm, I'm just being heavy handed with them. Maybe the heat has swollen the plastic, I don't know. But it's not quite as good as Visper. Nevertheless, they're, they're all right. They're pretty good lads, they make dandy planes. That being said, we can look at the Decepticon side of things and guess what, the transformations and the articulation are exactly the same. We have Night Flight first, who is in G1, the exact same mold as Over Air, except in the update, Over Air was updated using the Storm Cloud Micromaster, and Night Flight was updated using the Visper 
Micromaster. Uh, it matches him fine. There's nothing wrong with it. The planes are almost interchangeable. Um, it'd be nice if we got a couple of new molds. Like, it's fine. The paint is fabulous on Night Flight. But, again, he has that leg limitation. Now, he doesn't have paint on his... So maybe... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Visper did have limited leg articulation. I honestly can't remember right now. That was a long time ago. That being said, I looked at the G1 knife flight back in episode 521, along with the rest of the Airstrike Patrol. I looked at the uh, Siege Airstrike Patrol pretty recently, and now I can add knife flight to that group, and I, I dig it. I like it. On the flip side, we also have his partner, Skyhopper, and originally, the, the original Skyhopper was, oddly, a reuse of Stormcloud. The updated Skyhopper is a reuse of Stormcloud. So, like, it's a Stormcloud and a Stormcloud. It makes, it makes sense. It's the right thing to update him as. The green is more teal on the update, so it's not accurate, but I love the look of the update, even if it's a little bit off from what it should be. I never looked at the uh, G1 version of Skyhopper before because I don't have the helicopter, and though uh, I have the G1 Skyhopper on loan, he's just that plain mold again. So I don't think he's going to get his own review. This is this is his chance to have a little bit of a review. So that being said, here is G1 Skyhopper, and really to transform him, because the articulation is just the arms, and he can get in a seated position, kind of, sort of. His legs are, his lower legs are all one piece, but you flip that out and then you collapse the knees, kind of angling them back. And this is G1 Skyhopper in his plane mode. Here we have the G1 and Siege versions of this guy, as well as the G1 and Siege versions of Night Flight. I'm also going to make note here using the Decepticon versions of these molds that you can put these guys together to form like a sword thing. Uh, you use the kind of like app thrust of Skyhopper and when you fold up the head um, and create like a little thrust around the back of the plane mode for night flight you create a little peg that can go into that port like that when you pick up the nose cone section of the Skyhopper plane, there's a little 5mm handle here, so bigger characters could wield this like a sword. The Autobots can do it too, does, does that look better? So, from planes to ground, from two Autobots and two Decepticons to ground, and this is where things begin to get a little bit more interesting. I said at the beginning of this that this set isn't really giving us updates of, or not necessarily giving us updates of the figures that came with bases in G1. And of the first four figures we've looked at, three of them did in fact come with bases. In fact, the only one that we've looked at so far that didn't come with a base is Night Flight, and he was part of a group of four jets. Well, now that we move to the ground, I can tell you that neither of these guys were part of a base, but they do uh, represent something else. Here we have Road Police, I bet you can guess which one that is, and Wheel Blaze. And we're going to begin with Road Police. And you know what? I would venture to say to you that the update of Road Police is a pretty nice homage to the G1 version. Now, we haven't looked at the G1 version, but we're going to later on. In police car mode to police car mode, they look pretty good. How does the transformation work for the new Siege Road Police? Well, it's pretty simple overall. We flip up the hood, we flip out the legs and bring them down, and we untab the arms from the side of the vehicle and bring it forward, and we can stand him up. And what I love about the G1 Road Police is that he actually looks like a police officer. That being said, his articulation is not bad. I mean, he can definitely get in a seated position. He has a long thigh. And if we move this back, 
His arm can get all the way around. I figure I'd just do a mini review of him now, though we will see him later. What about the Siege version that just fell over? Well, I'd like to say the Siege version of this guy is awesome, but he's lacking a little bit, if I'm being honest. Um, I have his tires all the way down on his back, but really, you're going to want to leave them up like this if you want to have a full range of motion for the shoulders. The way the molding is, if you want to be able to get like out to the side like this, you really need to have this up so that the shoulder can go underneath. Otherwise, the shoulders don't go out very far at all. Then we get to his legs. I have done some work on his legs and tried to help the articulation a bit. They can now go forward this far. They did not go forward this far. There's molding on the front of the leg. I cut that away with a crafting knife. Uh, the legs can only go out to the side that far because there's like molded in little starts down here. So they can't go out super far. Uh, there is a knee to 90 degrees, but I, I his legs do like to pop off of the ball joints. It's improved some now, but I feel like I may have to do a little more work there. I think the ball joint, like I think the ball peg is slightly too big for the slot. Like maybe it needs to just be slightly slant sanded down a little bit. It's not bad, but I expected this to be kind of like the road handler. Um, the road handler mold, and that's a pretty fun and effective mold. I don't find the legs come off on that, though some people have said that the legs do come off on it. If you have experienced that, then this guy's kind of no different. Of course, truth be told, this is really the comparison that we should make. Road Police is actually a member of Six Builder, and he is part of a combiner. He doesn't come with a base, he's part of a combiner. Naturally, now in the Siege line, he is not part of the Six Builder combiner. Will we get MicroMaster combiners going forward? Who knows? But if they could have some pretty good articulation and be stable and solid, it might be interesting to see what they could come up with. Just a thought. And his partner is Wheelblaze, who is actually a part of the Metro squad from the G1 MicroMaster Combiner teams. There are two bots that go together to make one. Now, we've recently looked at these uh, MicroMaster Combiner teams, or a couple of them. We have not yet looked at the Metro squad, though we will. And being a Combiner team, there's two guys that make this guy up. Uh, the front end of the vehicle is... Wheel blaze, and the back end of the vehicle is Road Burner. Um, here we have a comparable, uh, I guess, vehicle mode. They have like a bucket thing here. This guy, we can come over here and flip out like a like a crane, I guess. So vehicle mode, I guess, is kind of comparable. Uh, instead of being this unattractive kind of pukey orange. We now have him, or not orange, green. We now have him like more of a yellowy color. It's basically a reuse, slight remold of red heat mold, which is really based on Top Shop, but that's that's fine. Um, yeah, it's basically a, a red heat, red hot, whatever, remold. So we're gonna just put this back, and if we're being fair and actually comparing character to character, we really should split this and take that out of it, and this is really what we're left with. And they don't much look alike, do they? Well, let's take the G1 version out and look at how the conversion works very quickly here for the updated one, though we have kind of seen this before. The conversion for this little Autobot is pretty simple. We bring down the legs there, we put the heel pieces back, we stand them up, we bring the arms out and kind of bring them down, like they do come down a little bit, and then we stand him up. It's all right. He looks okay. The arms, they can go all the way around. They don't go out very far, unfortunately. If we get this up out of the way, the legs, they can go out to the side about that far. Can go back uh, a nice bit and forward quite a nice distance. Uh, the knees bend, the heels move. 
I feel like that this version of the mold is far more stable than the red heat, red hot version of the mold. I actually like this one way, way better because everything feels good and secure. It's one of the best feeling figures in the entire pack. Here he is next to his G1 self. Um, not, uh, I would have never just guessed out of the blue. Like, if I didn't know who Wheel Blaze was, I never would have guessed he was part of this squad in a million years. It's, it's iffy, man. It's pretty iffy. So, as was kind of the case, um, with the aerial teams, here we have one figure that's probably, like, a, at least a little bit better than the other figure. In terms of the... I guess combined mode thing that these guys are supposed to be able to do. I don't know. I don't I don't like it, but I guess I guess I'll try and sort of show it here. Uh okay, so we come here and we take that out. We put the arms in and we kind of collapse those arms and then there's a peg like right there, and there's a hole right there. And then we can put the shoulders into a couple of little notches there. Make sure we have the, the legs together. The guy could hold on like that. You could probably fold up these, these feet, I guess, to make it shorter, but like, I don't know, should you do this? I don't think so, this is not good. This is not right. I'm just saying, like, this is awful. Let's move on. And coming back to Decepticons, we now have Crate Maker, who apparently makes crates, and Fireline. And these guys are Decepticons. That being said, they're actually based on uh, a couple of Autobots. <laughs> I guess out of our repaints in Japan, I suppose. These guys are, are among the more confusing of this set. That being said, they're also two of the best painted from the set as far as I'm concerned. Crate Maker is a Decepticon. He is a brand new character, but it's not a brand new mold. It's, it's weird. He is a reuse basically of Siege Flak, who we already looked at uh, a little while ago. And really, uh, his head is sort of based on the character of Bomb Shock, but in reality, the paint scheme would be more like Power Bomb, who was part of the Battle Patrol team in Japan. It's weird, the Battle Patrol team I looked at in episode 486, the G1 Battle Patrol team. And here in North America, it seems like they had. Uh, Flak in the Battle Patrol team. It was not a bot. But in Japan, Flak was repainted and renamed into Powerbomb. Still part of the Battle Patrol team. So technically this is still Flak. And like I love the, the Flak figure from the Siege line. I love the G1 Flak. Basically Flak looks like this. Right, so you probably remember seeing this, because I've looked at the G1 and the Siege version of this. It's a fantastic mold, one of the best in the line. I absolutely dig it. It's repainted here with a slight head remold to look like the head of this guy. You may remember this, you may not, I don't know, but it's a bit of a convoluted story. That being said, his articulation transformation is amazing. The articulation. We have arms that can go all the way around. They can go out. We have legs that can go all the way back, all the way forward, uh, well out to the side. We have excellent knee bend. I mean, at least 90 degrees, if not more. It's He's pretty fantastic in terms of the transformation. We bring that up over his head. We bring his arms down to his side. We put his feet together. We fold up the legs like this. We fold them in like this. There are two little starts there. They fit down right there. And we have this little blue... 
down there. This little blue missile tank thing. And when compared to the G1, it's a green missile tank thing. It's fantastic. I love it. And then we have Fireline. And Fireline is... Again, that top shot or big shot, that red heat, red hot, like, mold, remold, reuse. This one is really more the top shot uh, version. Now, that being said, again, in this case, it's based on like a Japanese repaint. In Japan, again, part of the, like, Battle Patrol or whatever it is, the Battle, yeah, I think Battle Patrol, is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. Instead of having top shot or big shot, if you will, that character got repainted and renamed into Gunlift. So this is actually Gunlift. Now, to be fair, all Gunlift really is, is big shot repainted. I mean, we've seen this before. It's the same thing, except now, just like with uh, crate maker being based on power bomb. This time we have Fireline based on Gunlift, and both of these guys have been renamed, and they're both Decepticons now because Gunlift and Big Shot were Autobots. Now we have two Decepticons. So I don't know. It's all right, I guess, to add to the Decepticon ranks. I, I'm not. I'm not going to complain about it. So taking him out of it. The articulation here is exactly the same as we saw earlier with our version of Wheel Blaze. The arms barely go out, they can go all the way around, the legs forward, back just fine. And um, the. Out to the side, how do they do out to the side? Out to the side just fine as well. Um, the, the whole backpack here, it can rotate around. Instead of being a crane this time, it has like a cannon. Uh, the transformation again, exactly the same as before. We fold this up and put the heel spur in there. We fold this up and we put the heel spur in there. We make sure we tab the, the toes together. We bring the arms up on the, the sides and tab them in. And then we turn this around and there's our vehicle mode it's all right i guess it rolls off it rolls really well actually there you go there he is with the g1 mold and can this guy be used with his partner to make like a, a blaster thing you bet we would take this and straighten it up because that's going to be the handle and we would turn this all the way around and now we have a, a hole right there, and we bring this guy in, and we have a peg right there, and it should, huh, the look of that. Uh, they're supposed to go together like this, but I'm going to tell you now on my copy, because of the paint, the peg does not fit into the hole at all. I don't care because I'm never going to do this because this looks just awful in my books. Two great figures, awful combined mode. I stand corrected. I hate doing things halfway for you guys. They can go to stuck together, but it was very tight to put it in there. I, it might be results will vary. I don't know. I still don't think you should do this. I still stand by what I just said. Two great figures, awful combined mode. And finally, we come to the last two members of this set, Recon and Iron Tread. Recon, brand new figure based on the same mold as High Jump, I believe. And Iron Tread is uh, actually an updated name of Iron Works, the MicroMaster that came with the construction site base. So about four members out of the ten, maybe five, um, are updates of figures that came with bases. About three or so are updates, maybe four, are updates of like figures that came with other uh, squads, teams, whatever, patrols. We had one member who was part of a two-member combiner. We had one member that was part of a six-member combiner. And now we have one brand new character. 
By the way, Recon is not actually Recon. Apparently, it's pronounced like Icon with an R in front of it. So it's Rikon. And apparently, there's something to do with the R-I being a play on Rhode Island or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. But we're going to look at Iron Tread first. Now, Iron Tread is really an updated version of this guy, Ironworks, who I looked at with his base in episode 530. Um... The new one looks, looks great, looks tremendous. It's an excellent looking update, even in terms of what's on the back. And I guess I should actually turn this around if I'm being right. You know, we have, we have that backpack there. But then on this guy, we have this backpack. I don't, I don't know. I don't, and it's, it feels like that's as high as it can go. I don't want to push it anymore. I guess we can put, push it down. I don't really like the way the backpack is on him. I'll give it that. I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, the paint is stellar, but what about the articulation? Well, the articulation is like the arm. It can go all the way around, but it doesn't feel good uh, going out to the side. It it can do it a yeah a bit, not a lot, a little bit. Um, the the. Maybe, maybe if we turn this around, maybe we can't turn that around now. No, I don't, I don't think that's the way that that's, no, it's, it's definitely supposed to be like this for robot mode. I just, I don't know. I don't like that. The, the legs, they can not really go back. They can... Go well forward, I'll, I'll give it that. We have an a excellent knee. And out to the side, only about that far. Um, the legs are okay. I can deal with not really having any backward movement. I'm Whatever, I'm fine with that. I, I, li I actually like the forward and I like the knees. The weak... The weakness on this guy, though I'm kind of grumbling a bit here, is that I wish the arms were designed a little bit better. Uh, you can kind of tell how this guy's going to go. We will put his legs together. We're going to take this whole backpack piece and turn it around. It does have a couple of little nubs that you need to kind of get in position here. We bring the arms in by the side and we bring the like truck cab down front. And, like, that's how it looks, which is altogether not too bad, except we don't really have any windows on the side because that's right where the pin goes through. He looks all right, I guess, from front on. There he is with his G1 self. I, I don't know, I like the G1 self pretty, pretty great, but I do like the leg articulation of the Siege one better. And I'll say, the arm articulation of the Siege one is actually better. Even if it's not good, it's much better than what we had here in the G1. And then we have, finally, Recon, the new character. And the best I can do here is compare him to G1 um, High Jump. Uh, okay, uh, that's whatever, I guess. The G1 one is... All right, we haven't looked at High Jump's team yet, but it's an all right mold. It, it's it's interesting enough, and the new the new mold does homage it pretty nicely, if I'm being honest. I kind of had high hopes for this mold and this guy, and they sort of got dashed a little bit. I'll explain why. Uh, in this mode, he's fine. In robot mode, like he has excellent paint and stuff. He looks good. Uh, the arms they can go well out to the side. I dig it absolutely dig it they can go up and down they can't really go all the way around because of the way that this hood section is um but there's a there's a wide range there we get to the legs the legs can only go if we're pushing it they can go out that far um they can't really go back and going forward I can get them forward now. I could not at first get them forward out of package. Um, and get them down. The other one, same thing. Uh, the knee is a nice 90 degrees. Now, here's the thing with them. He's all right now. He's pretty good now, actually. But, out of package, my copy, 
had what seemed like ball pegs that were too big for the um, molded in socket on the leg. And the legs, as soon as you would begin to try to move them forward, the legs would pop right off. I sanded down the ball pegs. I actually cut a little bit away from the socket and I rebuilt some of the plastic around the socket. I don't know if your legs will fare better than mine, but the only reason mine are good now is because I did some work on them so they would pop on and off. A couple of these guys could use that. Their ball pegs aren't perfect. If you're cool with them not being perfect and you just want to display them, great. It's a wonderful little set for that. If you want them to be functional, you may have to sand down the ball pegs a little bit. You might have to thicken up the ball socket a little bit. Just kind of be prepared for it. the transformation for this guy. We kind of come here and we bring the hood section down. We come here to the waist and we turn the waist around. Then we can put the legs together and we bend them at the knees and kind of angle the, the legs back a bit up into position here on the back like that and then we angle up the arm and tab it in and angle up the arm and tab it in and this is what we get for vehicle mode it looks pretty great it's pretty accurate to that vehicle mode and a bit bigger now that recon is fixed i kind of like uh, the figure I didn't at first and I'm hoping that when we actually get a proper high jump that we won't have the same issues as Rikon here is having. So before we give a final grade to this whole set, bonus time, this is one of the little boxes that came with, I think it came in like a few things, but I know in Japan it definitely came uh, for use with Star Convoy. And I don't have the G1 Star Convoy, but here's what I do have. If we open this little box up, we can roll out. This is G1 Micro Master Rodimus Prime. That's right, Rodimus Prime. Okay, it's Hot Rod. It's actually Hot Rod. Um, and friend of the channel, Wayne, who gave me all of the G1 Micro Master stuff to look at, had the Micro Master of this guy said, hey, do you want to take a look at it? I said yes, but he's not really worth his own review, so to speak. So we'll kind of do it here now very quickly. Uh, the conversion for the guy, we fold down the middle of his hood. We come to the bottom and we fold down his legs and we bring his arms forward like that. It's actually a very, very true little Rodimus or hot rod. He can rotate his arms all the way around. Uh, he can easily get in a seated position. The lower legs are two separate pieces on him. Honestly, the, the paint apps and stuff are pretty gosh darn accurate. He looks very Rodimus-ish or Hot Rod-ish, except for the fact that the spoiler piece is down on his like ankles, lower legs, I guess, rather than up behind his head. But come on, look how small it is. What did you expect? Honestly, one of the better MicroMasters, even though he shouldn't really be a MicroMaster, but I get it. They had him so small because Star Convoy is supposed to be so big, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But in terms of a mold... Great little mold, fantastic little mold actually. And the transformation is interesting. The articulation is effective. The color scheme is very accurate for what we're working with. Honestly, in terms of being a MicroMaster, I say this guy's about an eight and a half. It's pretty excellent. Now what about the Siege set that we've been focusing on here? And finally, this crazy journey comes to an end. Here's the thing, we have some winners and some stinkers in this lot. Overall, do I think that it's worth it? Yeah, probably. It's, it's a fun group of figures. Uh, just realize that you may have a few issues when it comes to the hips that you might either have to live with or work on. Outside of that, the paint is excellent across the board on these guys. Nice, nice detailing. The bit of remolding is effective. Uh, some molds are as good, if not better, than they were. Some molds are starting to show a little bit of 
degrading that hopefully marks the end of those uses. I'm happy to have this, I'm happy to have these updates, and it may be the only way to get a lot of these characters. Do I think it's worth it? Yeah. Do I give it a perfect score? No. The paint, I'm going to say, is nine and a half. It's fantastic. The articulation is five, maybe. I mean, five, I guess. Uh, the transformation, for the most part, it's five or six. Overall, this box set is about a seven, seven and a half. It's a very like, middle-of-the-road box set, but it's fun for what you get, and you kind of fill out your Siege Micromaster ranks in one fell swoop. And who wouldn't be happy about having all of these little guys to help fill out their ranks? So, here we are again, and at the end of the day, I gave this set somewhere around a seven. I mean, it's... Maybe seven and a half. It's it's like it's a pretty good set, but it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. The Storm Cloud mold is still easily the best MicroMaster mold that we have gotten yet. It has elbows, it has knees, it's tolerance well. Both of them are tolerance well here. The um, reuse of the Visper mold is it's all right, but the legs don't have the mobility that I kind of wish they had forward. And they do like to pop off a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, the reuse here uh, for Wheel Blaze is way better than the Red Heat version. It's tolerant so well in comparison. Uh, the Top Shot and Flak reuses are fine. If you like the uh, Top Shot and Flak reuses, then the Decepticon repaints here based on two Autobots from the Japanese continuity, are still just as good. No stronger, no weaker. Um, the real point of interest here would have to be the two new molds. Iron Tread, of course being Ironworks, is it's all right, but it doesn't have great mobility. It has beautiful paint. He looks fa fantastic in robot mode. Beautiful paint, but it's not the most versatile mold. It's, eh, it's only all right. Um, I had high hopes for Road Police. I had to work on his hips. I may still have to do work on them. That disappointed me. Um, maybe yours will be tolerance better. But I was really looking forward to Rikon. That's right, Rikon. Sounds like Icon, not Recon, even though Recon would make sense. Um, but Rikon is... Like, the mold was okay, but, like, his... I, if I tried to move the leg at all, if I looked at them funny, they fell off. Because, not because the ball peg was too small, but I honestly think the ball peg was too big for the socket. And when you went to move it, it was almost like the ball peg pushed the leg off. So, I did have to do some work in both kind of sanding the ball peg down a bit. And I took it upon myself to even... Uh, like do a little bit of remolding of the socket, but you might not need to do that if you just sl Slightly you don't even need to do a lot. Just get a little piece of sandpaper and sand it down a little bit Now when I put his legs on, I'm not gonna say that they don't pop off They do on occasion, but at least now when I put his legs on I can actually hear that Satisfying clicky snap of the leg clicking into place. It's a fine set, but it certainly comes with its strengths and its weaknesses. Anyway, let me know what you think about this set. If you bothered to pick it up, if you've even been in for the MicroMasters in the line. Now that I have this one, I'm really hoping, man, that we get some Rainmakers along the way because I'm itching to have those guys. Absolutely love that mold. Absolutely love that look. Even though a lot of people complain about it being bland, it's so animation accurate. I am digging it. Anyway, like I said, let me know what you think about these guys. If you're in a position to help the channel, there is a link down in the description. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. It helps the channel very much. I appreciate you coming by, giving me some of your very valuable time. I look forward to being with you guys on Friday to check out episode two of Universal Collision. In the meantime, I also look forward to the next time that you and I get together, either in the live streams, which seems to be becoming a thing on Thursday evenings, or right here inside the videos.